a strength giver. Well, hallelujah, a Holy Ghost deliverer. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And so we just praise God. Amen. For the praises that have went up. Hallelujah. Amen. We want you to know. Hallelujah. Uh, if you don't get it in the wash, maybe you'll get it in the rinse. Thank you, Lord, because it's time for the word of God. Amen. And it just come to my mind. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, we want to go old school. Let's keep your walking to a minimum. Matter of fact, we'd love if you didn't walk at all. Amen. As the preacher, amen, get ready to go forth. Amen. And that's just a, a protocol of the house. I believe the blessing will just move if we give the most earnest heed. Amen. To the word of God. Amen. And so uh, we, we thank the Lord. Amen. For Lady Johnson. We honor her. Amen. And uh, we praise God for Elder Sloan and Elder Green and their wives. Amen. We uh, thank the Lord, amen, for all who are here, whether it's Pentecostal Power or True Church of the Firstborn, amen, God's house, amen, of refuge, ain't God a good God, hallelujah, and I hope I didn't miss you, amen, and we praise God, amen, for the Speaker's Church today, amen, hallelujah, uh, and we definitely honor him, amen, your pastor, amen, Edward Murchison, and uh, his wife, hallelujah. Um, God has been blessing us all through this uh, youth conference, amen. And we're just saying that to preempt you to look for your blessing, to have your expectation. Thank you, Lord. This is the uh, end of the conference, but I'm going to tell you, God's anointing is just as strong at the end as it was in the beginning. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at somebody say, you just in time. You just in time. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. You're just in time to get your blessing. Amen. And, and so we, we want to uh, just move along and we're going to ask the speaker's wife. Amen. Sister Murchison, if she would just come. Amen. We want her to introduce. Amen. Her husband. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, let's give her a hand. Praise. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Amen. And following her, amen, you'll be in the hands of Pastor Murchison. But I want to say I am so grateful for the experience that we've had this weekend. We've been able to come um, both on Saturday, I think we came Thursday night, um, and the word has really been a blessing. Good job, Brother uh, Green, on this experience this weekend. Um, we're trying to raise up our youth because they are the next generation, and we're praying that we all do it God's way. I'm going to call Sister... Um, Sister Harris up so that we can sing a praise, and then the speaker of the hour is going to come up. Yes, moving forward, we want to continue to make sure that we are doing it God's way yes. and not our way. Amen? Amen. I got joy in my soul. God is in control. I got Satan on my trail. But I'm singing fair as well. He's attacking every day. But I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means war. Come on, y'all. This means, this means war. This means This means I got joy in my soul. God is in control. I got Satan on my trail, but I'm singing all is well. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means war. This means. This means war. This means war. You 
you can't have my family. You can't have my increase. You can't have my breakthrough. You can't have my. You can't have my. You can't. You can't. I plead. I plead. I plead. I plead. The blood. There's power in the blood. There's healing in the blood. There's deliverance in the blood. Me I can't take this lying down. That's me. That's power in your brain. That's me. That's me. War. There's power in your brain. I can't take this lying down. You can't have my family. You can't have my increase. You can't have my breakthrough. You can't have my, you can't have my, you can't, you can't, you can't. I plead, I plead, I plead the blood. That cow in the blood. In the blood, this means this means this means this means this means you can't, you can't. Young lady, let me tell you about your testimony. I've been working with young people all my life. Let me tell you about your testimony. The second verse, God is in control. God is in control. You put it down, you picked it up. You put it down. You picked it up. And everything that you were going through, he was still in control. No matter when you thought you lost control, he was in control. Let me tell you something, baby. You ain't the first, and you ain't going to be the last. You continue to keep your mind stayed on Jesus, and he'll keep you in perfect peace. He will keep you in perfect peace. Keep your mind, honey. The heart of your mind stayed on Jesus. I've been there. I've been there. Gun staring down, staring down the barrel of a gun. Facing, facing, facing suicidal tendencies. I've been there. I've been there. And I counsel people every single day, same as Pastor Murchison, same as Pastor Murchison. Keep staying that course. Keep, keep God first in all things that you do. And you keep going, sweetheart. This war, this battle that all of our youth are facing, it's coming to an end. As long as the parents, as long as the churches, as long as the community stay together and we continue to stand with one another. And we say, we say in our children's lives, we say focus. Where do you fat? I need the youth to come up. Pastor, I'm sorry. Pastor, I'm sorry. I where my youth at? Every youth, every child in this church, please come to the first. Come to the front of the church. Every youth. This is youth. The youth conference, right? It's a youth conference, right? Come on up. Come on, babies. Y'all are our future. Come on, Murchison. Y'all heard me. Come on up. I'll go and grab you. Come on. You got your blessed little pastor? We're going to pray for our youth today. We're going to pray for our babies today. Because I refuse to let these ones go. I refuse to let these ones go. Where the parents at? Where are the parents at? We are the heads of our families. 
and they looking after everything that we do. We are the example in everything that we do. Where are the parents at? Stand with your baby. Pray with your baby. Father God, touch our young people right now, Lord God. Continue to nourish them, Father God. As they go into the schoolhouse, Father God, Lord God, I ask that you look down on the teachers, Father God, that's coming over these children, Father God. Lord God, I ask that you touch them right now, Father God. Hold them, Lord. Mold them, Lord God. Touch their mind. Touch their heart, Lord God. Remove anything that's not like them, Lord God. Remove it right now, Father God. Lord God, I ask that you bless them, Lord God. Keep their mind staying on you, Father God. Remove all all negativity away from them, Father God. Remove anything that's not like you, Lord God. Any anything that could tear them away from you, Father God. We ask that you continue to control them, Father God. Keep them in your mind and your heart, Lord God. Continue to mold and shape them, Father God. I ask that you continue to get, bring them back to you, Father God. So many of us have strayed away from, our, from you, Father God. I ask that you bring them back, Father God. Lord God, I ask that you bless us, Lord God, as their parents, Father God, to continue to lead and guide them, Father God. Give us the words to say to them, Father God. Give us the ear to hear the concerns, Father God. Lord God, I ask that you allow us to continue to stand with them, Father God. Lord God, if we need some help, Lord God, I'm asking that we continue to call on the elders in the church, Father God. Sometimes, Lord God, we don't have the words to say, but our heart says it all, Father God. Lord God, I ask that you continue to bless us, Father God. And your darling son, Jesus, Lord God, I continue to bless, look down on the parents, Father God. Those who don't have no way to turn, Father God. Lord God, I ask that you continue to lift me up, Father Hallelujah. God, so I can continue to be the example that you want me to be, Father God. Lord God, I ask that you touch touch each child, each youth that's under the sound of my weak voice, Father God. Touch, Father God. Lord God, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for allowing these young people to be here today, Father Hallelujah. God. They could have been anywhere else, Father God. But I ask that you continue to bless them, Lord God. Lean and guide them as they're traveling to and from school, Lord God. To and from basketball practice, Lord God. To and from gymnastics practice, Lord God. Continue to bless them, Father God. And whatever you do, Father God, please don't forget about me, Lord God. Don't forget about these young people, Lord God. Don't forget about their parents, Lord God. Lord God, I ask that you look down on each leader on tonight, Father God. Continue to touch through them, Lord God. For they have their hands full, Lord God. In the community, in their church, in their home. Lord God, I ask that you touch. Heal their bodies, Lord God. Build them up where they're torn down. Strengthen them where they are weak, Father God. Lord God, I ask that you continue to bless us, Lord God, as a whole. Bring us together, Lord God. Touch us in your darling son, Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. While you're walking and going to your seat, can you begin to clap your hands for the Lord, everybody? Come on, can you clap your hands for the Lord, everybody? <clears throat> Come on, let's not play pity pat with them. Let's clap our hands for the Lord, for he is worthy. Amen. To be praised. Can you encourage somebody next to you and tell them, I still believe God? I still believe God. Is there any believers in the house today that can attest that regardless of what you're going through, I still believe God. I still believe God. Amen. I still believe God that whatever, amen, the Lord is getting ready to do, I know that God is going to do just what he said. I believe. In fact, grab somebody by the right hand. Stand to your feet as we go before the Lord in prayer as we read our scripture but grab somebody by the right hand, by the right hand, which represents the power, which represents the authority. Amen. And look that person in the eye and tell them and tell that person while you're holding their hand that I agree with you. Tell them everything you have up before the Lord, everything you've been praying for, I am the other that is agreeing with you that by this time next week everything I've been praying for is going to manifest now loose that hand and begin God praise for what's about to happen tell somebody manifest, manifest, manifest 
Come on, tell them I agree. I agree. It's going to happen. Come on, y'all ain't believing it. Tell somebody I agree. It's going to happen. Deliverance will happen. It's going to happen. Salvation is going to come. Healing is going to come. Blessings is going to come. I agree. I agree. I agree. I just need one other person to agree that regardless of what I'm going through, I just need one more person to agree with me that what I have before the Lord is going to happen. It's going to happen. Put somebody and say, manifest, manifest, manifest. He's manifesting it. It's going to happen. I don't care what devil comes. I don't care what the enemy is saying. It's going to happen. And because it's going to happen, I give God praise in advance. I don't wait till it happens. I tell God, thank you now. I don't wait until it happens. I give God glory in advance because it's already done. It's already done. Come, Come on, tell somebody it's already done. It's already done. It's already done. It's already. I praise. I don't care what it look like. I feel in my spirit that manifestation is happening in the now. I'm not waiting on next week. I'm not waiting on next year. But God is getting ready to do it now. Woo, hoo, 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 hoo. Glory to God. I, I, I believe that God is getting ready to do it now. <laughs> why, why, why you're standing real quick? This is only for three people. And I don't know why I'm doing this now, but amen. I didn't know I was going to go this way, but I just want to say this real quick. God just released in the atmosphere, Pastor Johnson. He said there is going to be a divine acceleration. I'm going to say it again. Divine acceleration. Divine. What is a divine acceleration? It is a supernatural ability of God applied to your life, your ministry, your time, and your circumstance to bring plans to pass at a much faster rate than what is humanly possible. I, I want to talk to some young people real quick while you're standing. I'm, I promise you I'm going to preach, but I, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. He said there is four, amen, stages of divine celebration. How you praise God is going to determine how fast is going to come? I first, listen, watch this. Watch this now. The first stage of acceleration is found in 2 Kings 4 and 16. And it says, by this time next year. See, somebody going to give God praise because you, what you're praying for, God said, by this time next year, it's going to happen. It, see, y'all can't praise him. I got you. I got you. See, some of y'all praising God is like, yeah, it's going to happen next year. That's, that's the first stage. But here's the second stage. It's found in 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1. He said, by this time, tomorrow. <laughs> See, how you, how you praise God is going to determine how fast what you're praying for is going to come. Now, now, I already told you, some of y'all said that you're going to praise God for what's about to come by this time next year. Uh, 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 2 Kings 7 and 1 says there is some things that's going to happen by this time tomorrow. Watch this. Here, here's the third level of acceleration. I don't know who this is for. The third level of acceleration is found in Matthew 8 and 13. The third level of acceleration said it ain't going to happen next year. It's not going to happen tomorrow. The third level said in the same hour. What if I tell you how good you praise God? As fast as you praise God, that's how fast he can turn it around. As fast as you praise God, that's how, you know, my, that's how fast situations can change. At, at, in this same hour. Some, somebody want God to do something in this same hour. He, he, here's the last stage. Here's the last stage. Here's the last stage. We got in the same year, by this time tomorrow, in this same hour, but then the apostle had to come in the book of Acts, chapter 2, and he said, suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! 
some of you got some stuff before God. You can't wait till next year. You can't wait till tomorrow. You can't wait till the hour. You need God to do some stuff suddenly. I wish I had somebody that would give God a suddenly pray. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what it looks like. Give God a suddenly pray. Suddenly I will praise you. I may not feel like it. Huh? My time, God. Huh? But I'm going to bless the Lord huh? at all times. Divine, divine, divine acceleration. He's accelerating you. He's accelerating your ministry. He's accelerating your faith. He's accelerating your bank account. He's accelerating your health. I come against poverty here. I break every demonic curse. I break every generational curse. Satan, loose your hole. I come against every spirit huh, of witchcraft. Huh? I come against every spirit huh, of suicide. Huh? I come against every spirit huh, of low self-esteem. Huh? I come against every spirit huh, of depression right now. Huh? Be free huh, in the spirit of your mind. Huh? Take your hands off. Huh? Oh my God. Huh? Lift the load right now. Huh? Break the yoke. Somebody say, increase. <laughs> take your seats, take your seat. How fast you praise him is how fast things will turn for you. Woo, hoo, hoo, hoo. Divine, 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 divine acceleration, divine acceleration, divine acceleration. What took somebody 30 years to do, God is going to accelerate you. And what it took 30 years to do, you're going to do it in three years. Folks been paying off their house for 50 years. God said in the next five years, your house is going to be paid. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm talking to me and my wife. If I'm talking, Sister Merchants, you got to say something. If I'm speaking for her, I said in the next five years, my house is going to be paid off. And you wonder why I'm talking like this, because when I've been doing things God's way, I'll be doggone if you make me feel bad for obeying God. I done endured some stuff, been talked about, lied on, criticized, amen, humble myself, and God humble me, and now I'm at a place of obedience that I'm reaping some things. You ain't going to make me feel bad for doing. You ain't going to make me feel bad for God blessing me. For it is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous. I ain't got nothing to do with it. I don't know why he's doing it, but I'm just so glad that he's blessing me. There is benefits. When we begin to do it God's way, there, there is benefits. But I sense in the spirit there is such a divine acceleration that's going. There is some folks that has been pressing in their hearts and minds. And we will keep asking ourselves, how long is it going to take? And God sent me as a messenger to tell just two or three of y'all, it's on the way. It's on the way. It's on the way. Not too many days ago, amen, I was driving down the street and I shared this with the church, amen. A young man was at the bus stop and, and, and something told me to turn around and to tell him something. And, uh, and as he was on the bus stop, Elder Green, I drove past him and I did a U-turn and I came and put my window down. And I said to the young man, I said, man, it's on the way. I didn't know why, but I was at the red light and he was so, uh, he was just agitated. He was doing all this type of stuff. <laughs> and God said, as I drove past him, he said, go back and tell him what you saw. And what I seen four blocks down was the bus, what he was waiting for. He couldn't see it from where he was, but God had me go ahead of him. Y'all missing this. <laughs> God, God had me come ahead of him and was able to come back and tell him what you've been waiting for 
It's on the way. I wish I had some folks that's been waiting on some things and you've been looking and asking God, when is it going to happen? When are you going to turn it around? When are you going to say, when am I going to get this job? When, when are the doors going to open up? And God said, it's on the way. It's on the way. It's just a matter of how you praise me. It's a, it's a matter of how you praise me. Protocol has already been established. We honor the spirit of God who is our life. We give double honor, amen, to God. Amen. Without him, we wouldn't be here. Without him, we wouldn't live, move, or have our being. We honor my wife, amen, Sister Murchison, amen. We thank God for her, amen, and to Prasta and First Lady Johnson, amen. We honor them and to this precious Amen. Church and to Elder Green and the entire staff here at Numa Olive who is doing an amazing job. Amen. We salute you. Amen. And tell you to keep going on. Amen. I'm going to give you what God has given me and we're going to move forward. Amen. I, uh, I oftentimes know when I minister out as much as we do, um, Every time I get ready to minister, when there is an urgency, the enemy always attacks me. Anytime I, I get up and before the people, whether I'm in town or out of town and I'm traveling and God is using me to preach, the night before is the worst nights. Um, last night I, I was couldn't, I was wrestling, I was warring. Got up this morning about two o'clock in the morning, began to to vomit and just not because of what I ate, but I was just warring. And, and, and there is sometimes a fight that we have in the spirit realm when we are in church and we are fighting against so many different spirits and so many different things that is blocking us from receiving what God has for us. But I want to tell you today, amen, God has strengthened us for such a time as this. And I believe that there is a word from the Lord in this beautiful theme, amen, doing it God's way. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. I don't know about you, but I'm still feeling, amen, it's still in the atmosphere. It's still in the atmosphere. It's still here, amen. And, and, and I want you to know that any given time, I believe that as I'm preaching, how you respond is going to be determined, amen, on how you receive your blessing. Amen. Amen. It is, it's imperative to us that we learn how to respond to the word, even if it is offensive, even if it is hurtful to your spirit or to your flesh. You better learn how to respond to the word and ask God to be able to help you. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Chapter 28. This, amen, scripture is what God put on my heart on the subject of doing it God's way. And I wrestle with this and I have not completely, amen, painted this canvas as of yet. Amen. God gave me the canvas and I, amen, played around with it with my markers and paint, but have not completed this in this totality. So I don't know where God is going to take me in this hour, but I will be obedient to what God is saying. When you have the scripture, please say amen and signify by standing, not in reverence of me, but in reverence of the word. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Amen. When you have it, say amen one more time. Amen. And it shall come to pass that if thou shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I commanded thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these things and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken uh, unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall thou be in the city, blessed shall thou be in the field, blessed shall thou, amen, be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground. And the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of the sheep. Blessed shall the basket and the store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee 
to be smitten before thy face. They shall, amen, come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven days, seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in the storehouse and in all that thou settlest thy hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Let's go to verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou will not. Hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Curse shall thou be in the city, and curse shall thou be in the field. Curse shall thou be the basket in the store. Curse shall thy fruit of the body, and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of the sheep. Curse shall thou be when thou comest in, and curse shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke, and all that thou sellest thy hand to do. Be destroyed, and thou wilt quickly perish. Because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me, the Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee, until you have consumed thee from off the land, whether thou goest to possess it. I'm going to stop right there. I want to use for a subject tonight, amen, his suggestion, my decision. His suggestion. My decision. You may have your seat. I, I, I want to deal with this real quick. In the offset of this particular subject, God said to me to, amen, encourage the men and women of God to let you know that every one of us still has a choice. Everything that I am, everything that I am not. Everything that I have decided or everything that I am trying to be, it all stems from a decision that I made. I need somebody to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I want to say it again. Everything that you are and everything that you are not, it is based upon a decision that you made. I oftentimes ask myself as I study the scriptures of God, it almost appears as if God himself Amen. The Holy One, the one with all infinite knowledge and wisdom, has somewhat made a mistake. It seems like that God, who is so rich in mercy, who loves us unconditional, it seems as if when he created me, he made some type of mistake. And please allow me to explain my justification for that statement. It is that because God created me and he wants me to love him, to follow him, amen, to be saved, to be holy. And I said to myself, God, if you want me to do all of the above, why did you leave it up to me to make that choice? Oftentimes I said to myself, God, it doesn't make sense for you to want me to love you with all of my heart, all of my mind, and all of my soul and strength. Doesn't make sense for you to want me to live holy and to be holy and then told me you make the choice. I said, God, why did you give me that? He said, if I didn't give you the choice, you wouldn't have a chance to choose between love and hate. If I didn't give you a chance to choose, you wouldn't have a choice to choose between good and evil. And so we're living in a time now where people, amen, I said, God said to me, he said, if I would have made you love me, it wouldn't have been real. We're living in a time now where people are being made to do stuff and not have a desire to do stuff. That's why we got to be careful about forcing people, watch this, about forcing people to the pulpit and to the altar if they don't want to come. Stop dragging people up here and making them say something and you are creating bitterness in their heart because they don't have a desire to do it. That's your desire, not theirs. So let's not turn the altar into something that people grow up to hate because you making them do it. If you ask them to come and they say, I don't want to, let them alone. 
but you pulling somebody up there, it's only making them have a deeper regret. This is why when we get old, we got up and said, when I, listen, we was made to come. When I get old, I ain't coming because they made me do it. So God said, I needed to create somebody that wasn't made to do it, but had a desire to learn how to do it. In, in my study of, uh, of psychology, I realized that oftentimes we don't see things as they are. We see things as we are. <laughs> uh, we, 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 we don't really see things as they are. You're looking at things at a perspective as where you are in your mind. That's why we come to church and we are so critical because we don't see things as it really is. You, you are looking at it from a perspective of where you are. Let, let me make it plain. A, a, a turtle cannot give a giraffe counseling on where he is. Y'all understand? When the turtle gives a giraffe, a man counseling about where he is, he's only given his perspective of where he is. If a giraffe is taller and the turtle is on the ground, how can you see from my point of view? And we have people who have lost their desire to give God praise. And I said this morning, when you take your eyes off the perfection of God, you're going to put them on the imperfection of men. Here's why, here's why, amen, David's wife, amen, Michelle, was so, amen, critical of, amen, David in his delivery of his praise because, amen, she was telling David, it don't take all that. You ain't got to dance like that. You ain't got to do all that. You know why she was so critical? Because she wasn't participating. Folks who ain't doing nothing in the church are the most critical people. It's too cold in here. That's because you're not doing nothing and you're sitting still. That's why you're so cold. If you get up and clap your hand and, and, and move around, you'll start feeling some heat. It's too loud in here. That's because your mouth is not open. And if you participate in the service, you will start blending in. Turn this mic down. Open your mouth up. That's the criticalness that the devil will have us coming in church and we have missed the blessings of God being over critical. God said one of the main reasons that we are not able to do things God's way and I know we've been riding on this for years and this goes both ways with the spirit and the flesh. I want to stop for a moment and tell you that the devil did not make you do it. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the devil, he presents suggestions as well. The, the, the devil presents suggestions as well. Amen. I told, amen, a brother, I didn't accidentally take off my pants and have sex with nobody. It wasn't no accident when I had intercourse. Y'all don't want to play with me today. Amen. Stop saying the devil, I accidentally fell. I purposely knew what I was doing when I called her and set it up over the phone. I knew what I was getting myself into, and he the devil made me do it. No, 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 no. It was in my heart to do it and there was an opportunity that came, that came from the stems of my heart. Mm. Here, here's what, I don't know why God keep, amen, bringing this to me. It seems like everywhere I go, there is a spirit in the church called the spirit of consideration. And this spirit call of consideration says, I didn't do it, but in my mind, I have considered it. You'd be surprised how many men and women have slept with each other in the church. Y'all ain't going to say nothing with me. We looked at each other and said, oh my God, I can only imagine how it would be with her in the bed. Y'all don't want to be real. I'm talking to you lust demons, you lust deacons, and you lusting evangelists, you nasty missionary. I'm talking to y'all while we shouting and you jumping and looking. I'm talking about that spirit. It's a spirit of consideration. That says, I didn't do it, 
But I sure thought about it. I ain't left the church yet, but man, I done been to, man, I, 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 man, I go to five different churches and I ain't never left New Mount Olive. You never left the church, but in your mind, you've been gone for a long time. And that's where, that's where the decision is coming in. It's because our mind has been playing tricks on us. I used to think it was just women but I, there are some of us who are so indecisive in our decision making. You know, we, 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 after church, you know, one of our favorite lines is, what you want to eat? Don't tell me what you want. I'll give a suggestion. No, I want that. But how you going to say no? And you just told me you don't know what you want. And I say, let's go to Amen to Famous Dave. And you say, no, I don't want that. Just so indecisive. Tell somebody, would you make up your mind? Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Because when you're really hungry, uh -oh. it don't really matter what, amen, I offer unto you when your appetite is there, you're going to eat whatever is suggested to you. So the scripture declares as Jesus a man began to speak to us, to the children of Israel. He speaks blessings over their life. And I want to tell the saints of God, every young person, there is a benefit in doing it God's way. There, there, there is a benefit. You are not losing out. The enemy job is to make us feel as if we're losing out or that we are, amen, missing out on something else because we're doing it God's way. But God's way is the best way. God's way leads to everlasting life. God's way has benefits in it. And I am enjoying the benefits. I know what it is to be the billboard for sin. I, I was that for years. I understood what it was to play in the church, but, but there was no benefit in that but it wasn't until I made up in my mind amen to listen to the voice of God now God makes a suggestion by saying if you 73% of the Bible is amen predicated upon this principle if you then I Read throughout the scripture, you'll always find from the Old Testament to the New Testament, the scriptures being fulfilled in a formula, if you, being you and me, then I, being God, would do his part. Second Chronicles 7 and 14, if you, my people, which are called by my name, will humble yourself and pray, then I, being him, will forgive your, okay. Isaiah chapter 1, if you, being me and you, be willing and obedient, y'all ain't going to hear, that, that, there's always a condition about if you do your part, then, then God, y'all ain't saying nothing here, you keep wondering why your blessing's not coming, I want you to go back and check the footage and say, God, I really didn't do my part. Could it be the reason why you haven't received everything that God has purposed for you because you have not done your part? There is a thing that God has for us. These blessings that God had for the children of Israel was conditional. They was conditional. We think that just because you are a young person in church that blessings comes, but they are conditional blessings. God said, I have these for you if you would do the following. There is some things, there is an order that we have to have as young people. There, 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 there is a plight that we have to suffer through as young men and women in order to feel the glory of God. So many people want to walk in the anointing, want to walk in the spirit, but not willing to discipline themselves amen to read the word of God daily amen Pentecostal deliverance amen they are telling you every week every Sunday I am an advocate of always telling folks amen we have to learn how to stay in the word it, 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 it troubles my heart how we get up and pray that God will send us a word but we ignore the word you want God to send you a word. God speak to my heart, but you walk past the scriptures every day. 
I'm just praying that God would just send me a word. I'm just praying that God would just send somebody. I need to hear a word. And God said, you ain't picked up the word all month. And you talking about you. Well, God is not going to change what he has written based on what he said. If what he said is contrary to what is written, it is not the word. If God, if God is going to change what he said vocally and it don't coincide to what he's already written, then it's not even the word of God. So he said there comes a time where us as men and women of God have to learn how to get to a place of discernment. I'm, I'm, I'm moving fast. I'm moving fast because God is pouring into me, uh, 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 Pastor Johnson, that there is such a need for us not to just, amen, uh, 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 hear the word, but we have to be doers of the word. God makes the suggestions. He suggests to you that if you would do X, Y, Z, there's blessings, there is benefits in obedience. I wish I can tell somebody one more time, there, there is a blessing in your obedience. Tell somebody, there's a blessing in your obedience. Yeah, yeah, sometimes it costs you to obey, but there is indeed a blessing in your obedience. When you begin to obey God, God will open up doors for you. I'm talking to some people, and you wonder how come things is going wrong for your life. It's because you're not walking in a level of obedience. Not because I have a lot of money, but I have things because my obedience, amen, has been fulfilled. My, I begin to obey God. I begin to trust God. And every time I trust and depend on God, he opens up doors for me. Just Thursday night, brief testimony. I was sitting here. Uh, Elder Green was raising an offering, amen. And, and I text my wife. I said, babe, uh, did you send me some money on cash app? We getting ready to, you know, give an offer. She said, no. And I looked at my cash app. And I seen some money, so I thought my wife sent it to me. So I said, okay, thank God. So after service, I'm looking through, uh, trying to find out where does money come from. I didn't, get a, I didn't get a notification, didn't get an email. So I said, babe, you take this phone, you look through it. She's more tech savvy than me. She's going through, going through this, going through history. She said, I cannot Fine. How or who sent you this? <laughs> Y'all ain't gonna say. <laughs> she said, I, I don't know who or how. We we can't, Sister Murray, we can't find. I went through the history, try to go through my emails. I usually get emails, you know. Try Y'all send me something and I'll, and I'll show y'all how I usually work if you want to. Amen. Dallas Iron Emergency Junior. Amen. <laughs> just in case you just wanted to try me and see if I was lying or not. Amen. I'm going to show you the difference. Amen. Send it to me right now. Amen. Don't worry about it. But anywho, amen. Anywho, amen. I couldn't find it. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I couldn't find it. And I said to myself, God said, he said, this is what I'm talking about. When blessings will overtake you when you begin to walk in obedience. Oh. It, it takes something to begin to walk in obedience. And walking in obedience will cost you, Elder Green. Walking in obedience will cost you something. I, amen. I, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I, I feel like something is getting ready to break in here because I sense in the spirit there is some people that is warring in their mind. And this is why it's hard for you to make up your mind because you're warring in your mind. We're listening to the suggestions. We're listening to the suggestions of the devil. And there is times in my saved life was just not even a couple of days ago I had to walk around my house and say, shut up, devil. Shut up, devil. Shut up, devil. It is not so. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. But when you be warned in the spirit, you have to talk back to the devil. You, you, you got to learn how to talk back to the devil. I want to tell somebody today, if the devil talked one third of the angels out of heaven, what makes you think he won't talk you into hell? If he talked one third of the angels out of heaven, I don't know why you think he won't talk you into hell. And there's times in your mind well, you have to start telling the devil, shut up talking to me. And I'm not talking about the person. I'm talking about the spirit. 
And it takes discernment to be able to differentiate between the person. Oh, my God. Can I tell y'all something? I learned this morning. God was amen, preaching me this morning. And I told the saints that we are not wrestling against personalities. We are wrestling against principalities. You think you fighting against somebody's personality. They stuck up. They got an attitude. It's not their personality. It is a principality that we're fighting against. But because we don't have power to address these things, we let things just go by because we don't know how. We don't have enough power. We don't have enough word to be able to address these things. My God, when God, amen, I, and I'm sharing this. I'm moving forward. I'm on happy. I'm on happy. I'm on happy. I'm on happy. Listen to me. Uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I was out of town, and, and, and I let my daughter, I'm helping some young people, I let my daughter stay with somebody while I went out of town for a few hours. And, 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 and as I let her stay at this individual's house, well, it was a safe saint house, amen, but there's some things that come inside of houses. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. Amen. She, she, was, she was at the house, and, and as I was driving down the highway, I had an epiphany. And as I was driving, I had a groan, loud groan. I said, mmm. And my wife said, babe, what's wrong? I couldn't explain to her in the moment of what I seen. I went, picked my daughter up, got in the car. She opened up the door. And I said to her, I haven't talked to anybody she was with, wasn't conversating. I said to her, Amiria, I want you to be honest with me. Were you in the video that the girls was making? That, that, was you in this video that the girls was making? She said, sort of, sort of. I didn't try, but they was trying to teach me a dance. And by this time, I'm in tears because my wife will tell you when I go out and minister, it's different when you minister to somebody else's family. It's, it's different when God gives you a word for somebody else. I, gotta, I can deliver that word easily when God gives me something for your children. Hmm? I, I, I can do it with confidence when God gives me something for T3. But when God speaks to me about minds, it broke me. I, I, I began to just, I couldn't stop crying. And as we drive and God began to reveal to me, I said to my wife, I said, babe, that's not what she had on. And my wife said, yes, yes, yes it is. Yes, it is. I said, babe, that's not what she had on. I said, Amiria, who gave you that shirt that you had on? She said, my friend did. I seen the entire thing God opened up and just put me in the place where she was and it grieved my spirit but he showed me that and I said and Keisha began to cry now because it's, it's personal now my, this is my daughter now so what you mean what, what you mean I thought you had that on and after we got home I couldn't let it go hey amen I sat down we sat down at the table and it was so I was so somber. I was so broken in my heart and asking God, God, Lord, help my children, help my daughter, help my son, save them, God, whatever it is. And, and then God kept revealing to me. So I called my daughter back down. I said to her, I said, did you know the boys that was on the phone? When I say God gave me everything was not there, did not talk to the person. God began to reveal everything. That's why I want to tell every young person, everything you do, you cannot get by with what you think nobody else seeing you do. I, I, I don't care. And this is where we got in trouble at because the Bible said in Ecclesiastes 8 and 11, when a sentence of a crime is not carried out quickly, the hearts of men are filled to do evil continually. And because you didn't get caught, 
makes you feel that you got by. So nobody seen me do it. So guess what? The devil says, keep on, man. Did nobody, did nobody see you last night? You good? You good? Man, did, nobody, hey, did, nobody, did nobody see you? Get on up there and sing. Did, did nobody hear about what you said? Don't nobody know your conversation? And we start creating hypocrites. Behind telling folks, just give God praise anyway. I want to tell you, hey amen, praise ain't going to get you out of everything. Something you're going to have to stop and repent and get your happy tail on the altar and do it all over again when you get done shouting. Never seen so, my God, Lord, help me. I hear you, mama. Hey, Amen. I, I, I oftentimes think about my mother when I was growing up. I've never seen so many people who would shout for hours and shout and spit on each other and still have the same nasty attitude, still have the same lustful spirit. You can't shout all day long and still don't want to treat people right. After you get done shouting, if your heart ain't right, you still going to go to hell. Yes. Pastor, I'm going I'm to show you how to hell. When, when folks get to shouting, I'm going to tell you how to get them out the spirit real quick and tell if they real or not. Bring them to the altar. Bring folks to the altar. They, right away, they dry up their eyes. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going back to my seat. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. You want to see if somebody real or not? Stop it from shouting. And my mother used to grab me while you shouting. She said, come on down here, son. Get on down here. Tell them thank you. 45 people in the front. And can't nobody. Amen. We, oh, my God. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. God has an order. We got to bring folks to the altar for a place of repentance. It, it, it's, it's, his, it's his suggestion, but ultimately, it's, it's, it's your decision. So God began to show me the whole situation with my daughter. I said to her, I said, baby, you're not in trouble. But I looked at her, and I said to her, I said, baby, your daddy... Here's what my wife said. Your daddy is saved. God has given him insight. And there's nothing you can do that God won't reveal through the man of God. I want to tell you today, young people, ain't nothing you can do or is doing now that somebody cannot see where you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know there's time where we feel like we can drive to the farthest of the furthest places. But even in the land where you think you by yourself, God will have somebody. Y'all ain't messing with me. Amen. There's been time where me and my wife was walking in the mall in Chicago and seeing sites that wasn't supposed to be out. And we walked past and I said, how you doing, brother? God always have somebody. Because when you really want to be saved, oh my God, help us, Lord. I said to her, I said, baby, you're not in trouble. You're not in trouble. But I just want you to be careful. Because there is a spirit of influence that is raging over our young people. That there, is a, there is a spirit of influence that not only affects us through the world, but there are some influences in the church. I'm not talking about this church, y'all. But there are some influences that's around us that we have made since I've been saved. I ain't going to get no help right here, but I've made some decisions since I've been saved that I say, Lord, forgive me. I thought some things since I've been saved that wasn't like God. And I said, God, Lord, you got to help me. That's why every once in a while, I got to treat my mind like it's a dog, like a dog going out to the wrong fence. And I got to say, hey, get over here, mind. Get over here. 
Don't you dare sit there and let your mind think like that about your sister. Get your mind back. Uh uh-uh, uh, uh uh. No, no, bring it back. Bring it back. You ain't finna have that lust spirit in your mind. Bring it back. You sitting here in church and your mind will go somewhere else. You got to bring down every thought that exhausts your name. That will exhort itself against God. You got to pull that mess down out your mind. Fighting against spirits in the church, it will come in your mind. I done had so many fights in my mind. Oh, I didn't get no amens right there. I done swung off on folks in my mind because they looked at me funny. You soft nigga. I, ooh, I had to say stuff in my mind. I said, Lord, I can't think like that. I cannot think like that. I can't think like that and be saved. I can't, I can't walk around like that with that in my heart and still be a man of God. I can't, I can't operate in the flesh and think something going to come out in the spirit, flesh, and my God. You can't, ain't no such thing as a carnal Christian. You either save or you ain't. <laughs> Fruitful fornication, get out of here. Innocent idolatry, get out of here. Either you hot or you cold. I must. Ain't no in between when it comes down to holiness. Ain't no in between. Either you in or you're out. Either you're saved or you're not. Amen. Either you in or you're out. There is no in between. Ain't no time for the saints. Amen. I told them this morning. Ain't no time for the saints to be doing the hokey pokey. Put your right foot in. Put your left foot out. We just shaking all about. Get to where and put your whole self in and give your whole mind and body. Give it over to God. And stop all this hokey poking around and holding this. It's, 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 only, it's only his suggestion. I'm hurrying. I'm hurrying. He says, he says I, I'm making this promise for you, son. It is conditional. That if you will hearken diligently... Hearken means to listen. Ten more minutes and I'm gone. He said, if you would just hearken diligently, which means everybody that's listening is not hearing. Just because you hear me don't mean you listen to me. Because listening requires you to do something. Mm. Y'all, y'all know when I was growing up, my mama said, you, you didn't hear what I said? And she said that because what she said was not done. She said, take the trash out. And if she walked past and the trash was still there, she gave me grace by saying, did you hear what I said? Let me clarify. Maybe you didn't hear before I hit you. Maybe that's the reason why you're not doing what God said, because you're not listening. Let me, let me just make sure you hear me right. He said, if you will hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. And it requires us as believers to understand that we got to be able to hear the voice of God. There's a lot of spirits that's talking, young people. Oh, old people too. There's a lot of spirits that's talking. And you got to be able to learn what and who is talking. Is it of God or it is of the devil? Who is talking to me? And, and I want you to know it's not that God is not talking. His problem is that we're not listening. He's talking. But Amos said that he was going to send a famine in the land. And the famine was not going to be of, of, of water. It wasn't going to be of, 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 of bread. But it was going to be of hearing the word. Y'all know we had a place where folks don't want to hear the word no more. One clap. Thank you. Thank you. We, we at that place where folks, amen, don't want to hear the word of God. We want to speak all the blessings of how to receive all of these blessings. But God said it comes when you, amen, make the right choice. He said, if you will observe all the things which I command thee, all. Somebody say all. I want to tell you, you cannot, amen, pick and choose when, amen, and what you want to obey when God said. I'll do it, God, but they're going to have to come to me first. 
I, I, I repent when they come to me. And God said, I didn't tell you to wait for them. Because folks will, amen, have stuff in their heart and be the loudest one in the church shouting and they don't want, y'all ain't going to help me and you sitting down here and you bound or can't move and they jumping up and you wonder how they so free. They ain't free. You sitting here bound because you waiting on them to come. If you don't come, I've already forgave you. So we can't pick and choose how we want to be used by God or what. Amen. Area, we're going to obey. God, I'll do this part, but I ain't going to do that one. A half obedience is still disobedience. Oh, my God. Can I say it again? I said a half obedience is still disobedience. He said everything that God command you to do do it and he said all of these blessings shall come on thee all all somebody say somebody say all 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 and they're gonna come on you and they're gonna overtake you overtake you I I, I feel there are some things that's getting ready to happen to me because I've been doing what God has called me to do I want to talk to some people that's been really living and going through I want to talk to some folks and encourage some folks heart that's been fasting and praying amen it's enough about amen what everybody ain't doing but let me just encourage the saints of God who really been holding on who been praying and been faithful to God and you said God I just want to see a manifestation of my fruit I want to be able to see something I want to be able to see things change. I want to tell you today that God is getting ready to bring something your way. Huh? Can I tell you today, huh? just when you thought things was not going to turn around, huh? I heard God say in the spirit realm, huh? things are getting ready to turn around for you huh? because I've been waiting on God to do it for me. Huh? Tell somebody it's the turn around, the turn around. Bless it, bless it, bless it. Let me hurry up. And it's going to overtake thee, and thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. I don't care where I'm at. I'm blessed. Can I tell you, for some of you haters, you can't, you can't curse me if you try. God said, you, you can't. You, you can't curse me if you try. Folks will try to hurt you. Hold back from giving. Hold back from doing what God says. But my blessing is not predicated about what you do. God going to find a way to bring somebody out to me. And he will bless me. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. Because I've been obedient. God has a way of coming in and sending somebody who you didn't even expect. Ooh, I wish I had some help. Blessed shall be, amen, the ground, the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of the sheep. Blessed shall thy basket and thy store. Y'all ain't going to say nothing about How many of you know God has always provided? Can we give God a praise for always providing? <laughs> Tell somebody he's always provided. There's never been a time where I needed something and God didn't come through. God has always provided. I didn't have to go make a way. God always made a way. I didn't have to go steal. God always made a way. I didn't have to go borrow and take. God always made a way. I didn't have to go hustle. God always made a way. I didn't have to go steal and rob. God has always made a way. The Bible said I was once old. Y'all ain't helping me here. He said, and I never seen the righteous huh? forsaken nor seen his somebody said he always provides God always provides for us huh? and just in the nick of time when you feel as though God is not going to come through huh? I want to tell somebody he's coming through for me huh? tell somebody he's coming through for me huh? I don't know how it's going to be paid huh? but I know God is going to come through for me huh? because I am the righteousness of God huh? I've been walking in his word I've been being obedient huh? and it's time for the saints of God huh? to begin to be the manifestation huh? of what we preach about huh? I told the church 
not too long ago. Huh? I don't want to preach nothing. Huh? And God can't make me an example of. Huh? I don't want to preach about how God huh, is going to be a healer. Huh? And I'm the only one sick in the church. Huh? I'm not going to preach about God being a way maker. Huh? And while I'm preaching, they putting a boot on my truck. Huh? Y'all ain't going to help me here. I said, God, if you want me to preach the truth, huh, you got to make me an example huh, that the men and women may know. Huh, and if you walk up right before the Lord, huh, there is no good thing God would withhold from you. Huh, but you got to learn how to walk up right before him. Huh. I chose to be holy. Huh. My God, I just heard the Holy Ghost huh, say you got to make a decision today. Huh. Tell somebody, make up your mind. <laughs> Oh God, you got to make up your mind. This is why we come to church. And I, I'm against this. It, it grieves my heart that we got to come to church and try to get people in the mood to praise God. It grieves me, Evangelist Wilson, that we got to come around and get folks in the mood to praise him. So we got to sing 25 songs huh, until you want to move, until you decide huh, to wave your hand. Huh. Praise conductors just roll out. Huh. Tongue hanging out their mouth. Huh. Can't get no water because huh, you want to sit down there because huh, you got to get you in the mood. Huh. When you woke up this morning, huh, that was a great mood. Huh. When you opened up your eyes, huh, that was a great mood move. Huh? When you was able to lift your hands, huh? that got me in the mood right there. Huh? I don't need another song. Huh? I don't need another praise team. Huh? I don't need another band huh? to get me in the mood huh? when I think of the goodness of Jesus huh? and, El Mashatama, huh? and all that he's done for me. Huh? I automatically get in the mood. Huh? My hands go up. Huh? My mouth opens up huh? and I tell Lord I thank you. Huh? It could have been the other way huh? but you pull me out out, huh? I made up my mind. Huh? I will bless the Lord huh? at all times. Huh? May not have what I want, huh? but you've been so good to me. Huh? I got to bless you huh? because you've been so good. Huh? I made up my mind. Huh? I will bless you. Huh? Tell somebody I will. Yeah, my mama shot my. I'm hurrying up, but I, I feel a shift. I feel a shift. I feel a shift because the reason why some of y'all can't praise God because you realize you're saying to yourself, I should have listened. If there's somebody in here just like me, I speak this to myself and I get mad. See, when you real, I'm my biggest critic. I go home and I get in the mirror. Man, you stupid. Why would you say something like that, man? Well, I'm talking to myself. I, ain't, I don't need the pastor to do it. I'm talking to me. Man, why did you let your mind go there? Man, why did you? Do you know God got a calling on your life? Why would you play with this? Why would you play like that? Get yourself together. You better learn how to encourage yourself. Stop waiting on the pastor to do it. Stop waiting on your mama to do it. You got to look yourself in the mirror and say, I'm going to get through this. Huh? I'm going to survive this. It may be hard, but I will. I'll get through this. So I begin to begin to look in the mirror and talk to myself. And I said, Lord, things would have been so much better. Things would have been so much better if I would have paid attention to what you told me. Oh, I feel a repentance in here today. <laughs> ah, <laughs> I feel a repentance in here today. <laughs> my God, my God. <laughs> my God. Oh, hush, hush, my mama, see. <laughs> oh, glory to God. <laughs> I feel a repentance in here <laughs> because there are some people that are saying in their mind, <laughs> things would have been so much better <laughs> if I would have listened to what God told me to do. <laughs> Is there anybody here <laughs> that realize you made some mistakes? Ha, because you didn't listen y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me ha. God said there's some stuff you going through ha. I'm gonna forgive you ha. I'm gonna forgive you ha. but you still got to pay for it 
I'm going to forgive you for it. Yes, you was wrong. Yes, I forgave you. But you still got to pay for it. Yes, I love you. Yes, you can come to church. But you still going to pay for it. Because the wages of sin is still death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Tell somebody, Lord, help me to listen to you. My last scripture, I'm gone. I'm done. I'm done. Uh, could y'all move this table right here? Uh, we need to put that. T- Pastor Johns, can we move this right here? Okay, let's, let's move. Some help coming. You ain't, come on, man. This ain't your stuff. Come on. Thank you. That's, that's right. Needs some hell. Amen. Here's what God, here's what God is saying. And as I read this scripture, I'm reading this scripture on behalf of God. God showed me this, Pastor Mother Johnson. He said, the young people that are dealing with some stuff you ain't told nobody about. He said, some of us are living with past regrets. I hate I did that. God, I'm, I I messed up. And we're holding this stuff. And here's what God said to me. Psalms 81, verse 8. Hear my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel, If thou were hearkening unto me, God said, all I wanted you to do is listen. (laughs) There shall no strange gods be before thee. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But here's what he said. Here's the response of the Lord. Here's my response I gave to the Lord. He said, but my people would not hearken to my voice. He said, Israel would have none of me. So this is what God did in verse 12. So I gave them up unto their own hearts and lust, and they walked into their own counsel. Can I tell you this? One of the most dangerous things that can ever happen is when God gives you over to yourself. When God turned you over to you, Because in your own mind, you've already convinced yourself you're right. In your own mind, everybody in this church looked in the mirror and told yourself you look good today. Until somebody came and told you you got a hole in your dress. Every one of us have convinced ourselves that we're in good standing. He says, I gave them up to their own lusts. And they walked in their own counsel. Folks, they don't want to receive help from nobody. Listen, you need counseling. My, I, my, it seems like every day God has me counseling men and women. And he said, people don't want to hear sound teaching no more. As long as you telling them what they want to hear. Somebody got their Bible open. I'm going to stay here. Sister Jada, go to Isaiah 30, verse 9 and 10. Real quick, Isaiah 30, verse 9 and 10. This is a rebellious people. Come on. I'm going to read it if you don't read it. This is a rebellious people. That's what I said. Lying children. Children that will not hear the law. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Which say to the pastor... Don't see, don't listen. Don't you preach about what I'm doing. Don't get up and talk about what I'm doing. Come on. Don't prophesy me nothing good. Don't tell me, don't prophesy me not. Come on. Don't tell me right things, Brother Johnson. I want you to preach to me smooth things. I want you to listen what the Bible said. Prophesy to me deceit. 
This the generation that says, I want you to lie to me. I want you to tell me that I'm okay because I'm talented. I want you to tell me that I'm going to go to heaven anyway and you still got homosexuality tendencies. Lie to me, pastor. Lie to me. Don't tell me what I, don't tell me the truth. He said, tell me deceit. Tell me that I'm okay because you need me because I'm your praise and worship leader. Praise and worship leaders and young people, your character is being destroyed based on what your status is on Facebook. And I'm going to tell y'all private peoples who, amen, liking and sharing these naked photos, you demon seeds, you stop liking these pornographic pictures. You liking stuff and sharing in your name, Minister Johnson. What are you liking and hardening stuff for? What are you pushing this stuff for and shining around? And it's abomination before God. But we want the pastor tell us to see. Come on, finish that, Sister Jada. Verse 11 says, get you out of the way. Get it. Come on, come on. Turn aside out of the path. Uh-huh. Because the Holy One of Israel is to cease from before us. Now, he said, we wonder why. We ain't having the presence of God. I tell the saints all the time, we are publicly only what you are privately. We wonder why we can't have a move of God that flows into the church. It's because we don't have a private life. Can I say something to the young people? I promise you, I'm going to dance because I feel like shouting, man. You, you know why people... God spoke to me. He said, you know why? You know why? You know, sometimes we have good times in church. And everybody be, amen, they posted how much, amen, services be and God moved. And, 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 and he said, people, he said, they post that all the time because it's not normal. The reason why you keep posting that we had somebody, we had two people get baptized and church was lit and the fire was fell down. You post that and brag about it because it only happens every once in a while. But every time we come into the house of God, service ought to be lit. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I don't care if it's youth conference or Bible class, service ought to be lit. You can't tell me you got the fire and we come into the church and we can't feel the power of God if there's two or three. We so happy with a move of God. We get so happy with a move of God. Oh, God blessed us. But then how come he didn't bless you last Sunday? How come we didn't have a move of God the week before that? Don't tell me God only moved during a youth conference. But because we're telling the preachers not to preach to us right thing, the presence of God has left the building. So we have in church, but we don't have in God. We're dancing and shouting, but the Spirit of God is not even in the house. We, we're learning how to shout because we know how to. We have a form of godliness, but we're denying the power thereof. But I'm tired of the young people just shouting. I want the young people to have the power that you can go to school, walk down the aisles, walk in your hallway, and touch every locker in your school and say the blood of Jesus, the blood, the blood of Jesus over every classroom, the blood of Jesus over every teacher. I walk in the classroom and I anoint the class. I anoint the locker. I anoint the cafeteria. We need the power of God. These signs shall follow them that believe. When you got the power of the Holy Ghost, it just don't operate in the church, but it will go to school with you. 
You ain't got to change once you leave. The, y'all ain't helping me here. I'm tired of you going to church and then going to school and changing in the bathroom. You need to be delivered and make up in your mind. If you're going to wear pants, do you. But let's not faking the funk. I'm going to live safe whether I'm at home or whether I'm at school. Holiness is still right. Let me hurry up. Uh, can I tell you this real quick? God just dropped this in my spirit. I don't know who this is for. But God did not give you a day off to live in sin. I need to say this because this is in my heart. You can't preach 364 days that it's wrong for me to wear, amen, makeup and lipstick. And then... At the funeral, at your wedding, you do everything you preach against, you a devil. You think God gave you a day off? You ain't really got to do it. It's your wedding day. You can put it on. It's your anniversary. You can wear it. The devil is a liar. I don't care if it's your wedding day. If you can't wear it, don't put it on at all. You a demon see, and you faking the power of the Holy Ghost. God ain't giving you no exception. Holiness is a lifestyle. Every day of the week, you got to be holy. You got to be holy. God done gave us an exception. My daddy died today. Guess what? I ain't finna go get no tattoo of him. Saints getting tattoos. This for my dad, mama. Look how y'all looking at me. I'm doing this for Big Bishop. I'm doing it for Bishop. One love, Bishop. And I got his face on me. You going to hell. You think God made an exception for you to sin for one day? For one day it's okay? For one day? You think God said you can have whatever you want to do for one day and then come back? You plan with your soul. You preach against it the whole year. Fake. Let me hurry up. He said, Psalms 81, I'm done. So I gave them up to their own hearts. So listen, here's what Jesus said, and I promise you I'm done. He said in verse 13, he said in verse 13, this is Jesus talking. He said, oh, I want you to hear, I want you to hear the magnitude of the voice of God, the expression. He had a somber in his spirit. He had such a remorse. He had such a a, a loathing. He said, oh, that my people had hearkened unto me. God looks at you and said, if you would have just listened. If you would have just shut your mouth, I told The Holy Ghost is not just for you to speak in tongues. But I've been in places where the Holy Ghost are parked in handicapped places. And my wife said, you know you can't park there. And I went back and moved the car because I didn't have the handicap sticker. Look at y'all looking at me. That's what the Holy Ghost would do for you. It will convict you, move you. You know you ain't got no handicap sticker and you're going to park there purposely. Get out the way. That, that, that's too much. That's too much. That's too much. That's too much. I'm, I'm talking about what the real Holy Ghost would do. You sitting up in the store eating grapes and cherries they ain't paid for. You a demon and you done stole. Tasting potato wedges and stuff ain't pay. You a thief. I'm just tasting and seeing if I really like it. I just want to see how sweet it is. And you done ate a whole pile. Y'all ain't saying nothing. 
that's the power of the Holy Ghost. It will convict you. The Holy Ghost will tell you to keep your mouth closed. Especially when you got something to say back to him. Anybody know you had something that you could have clapped back real, real quick? Really? You come, really? You, you want to, what? And God says, shut up. Shut your mouth. You know all they business. God says, shut, shut up. Don't you say nothing. You want to expose me? Really? Is that what we owe? And God said, right before you do it, shut up. Shut your mouth. Don't you say nothing. Holy Ghost will tell you to shut up. Shut up. Don't you say nothing. Don't you say nothing. And he cried sometimes. And I wanted to get back. I had the evidence against you. And God said, put it up. Put it up. Put it up. Put it up. Nope, nope, no, nope, nope. Because nope, nope. if you do that, you're going to kill him. Isaiah, if you told all the secrets, you're going to kill him. And if I told all your secrets, I'm going to kill you. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. So we got to learn how to handle this stuff. And he said, oh, if my people would have just listened to me. Oh, hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, Lord, try me again. Woo, that's, my, that's in my spirit right there. Lord, try me again. Lord, Lord, my shot, my mama. Lord, try me again. I know I messed up, God. But my prayer today, Lord, is if you would try me one more time. I know I didn't do things the right way. But, Lord, if you would just give me one more chance, I will follow your instructions. I'll do what you tell me to do. I'll go where you tell me to go. My answer will be yes. Open your mouth and say yes, Lord. My answer will be yes. I'll go if you tell me to go. I'll do what you tell me to do. I will tell you yes. Somebody say, try me, Lord. Try me, Lord. Try me, Lord. Try me, Lord. Woo. I'm done. He said, try me, Lord. Try me, Lord. Do it again for me. Give me another chance, Lord. He said, Lord, this time, I'll do it your way. Woo, I wish I had some help. That would be real and say, Lord, this time, I, whoo, whoo. Some of y'all in the, some of y'all right now are in the this time. Oh my God. My God. I feel the Holy Ghost. Because I see some people. You stuck between chapter one and chapter three. Chapter one says, and the word of the Lord came to Nineveh saying, came unto Jonah saying, arise and go to Nineveh. Uh, this is the word, verse one, chapter one. The word of the Lord came unto Jonah saying, go to Nineveh. And guess what Jonah said? Not me. I ain't doing it God's way. Uh-uh, not me. And anytime you tell God you're not going to do it, you're going to find yourself in chapter 2. Some of the hell you in right now is because you're not doing it God's way. And let me tell you this, saints, that if you really want to get out of your trouble, if you want to get out of the stuff you're going through, all you got to do is tell God, this time I'll say yes, this time. Lord, I know I messed up. The Bible said in chapter 3, verse 1, and the word of the Lord came into Jonah a second time. I wish I had some Bible readers in here. The Bible said in chapter 3, he said, and the word of the Lord came unto Jonah a second time. In other words, God said, I'm going to try you again. People counted you out, but God said, I'm going to try you again. People, people said, you ain't going to do it. You ain't going to make it. They said, you ain't going to be successful, but God said, guess what? I'm going to try you again. I love you that much that even, even though, even though you messed up. Brother Kirk, God said he's going to deliver you from the need of being understood. Look at me, son. Stand up, man. If you, if you, now, if you don't want to, you ain't got to. 
I ain't in the verge of making nobody do nothing. This is what God said. He said, he's going to deliver you from the need of being understood. You got to prove yourself. You just got to be real to yourself. You hear me? You got to prove yourself. You just got to be real to yourself. Because you keep trying to go to people to justify mindsets. You got you to you convince JJ. You got to convince none of these folks. You got to convince nobody. You got to be real to you. And God says he wants to try you again. Because you cannot keep coming under the anointing. You cannot sit under the word. You cannot be influenced by the power of God and still don't have a change. So he comes to, oh my God, hallelujah, oh my God. He said, God said, I come, he said, to give you another chance. And he said, it's up to you to take advantage of the second time. Because for too long, too long you've been covered and some of our young people is surviving because we're covered <laughs> you ain't got no strength for yourself you ain't got no power for yourself but the only reason why the devil ain't took you out because somebody covered you Somebody said, somebody prayed for me and they had me on their mind when I didn't even have a mind to be saved. Somebody was covering me. They said, Lord, wherever he is, bless my son. Lord, wherever he is, bless my daughter, protect him. Y'all don't want to hear. But God said, the time is coming where every time you refuse to listen to the voice, he said, the covering is going to come off and you're going to shout, but you ain't going to be protected. Can I tell you this real quick? Listen, listen, real, real, we'll break it down one time. Listen, I, I, I feel this. Stay right here. We talk about, and this is just dropped out in my spirit. We talk about the blood being on the doorpost. Y'all don't know our scripture. He said, put the blood on the doorpost. God spoke to me. He said, the blood only works when you stay in the house. You can't put the blood on the doorpost and then go in the club. You can't put the blood over your doorpost and still go out and be a kill boy, y'all. You can't put the blood over your doorpost and you still hanging out with fags, folks, and sisters. Because that blood don't cover you no more. That blood don't cover you no more. But once the blood is applied, you got to stay in the house. And the devil's trying his hardest to pull you on out of the house. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing here. Y'all, I, I, I'm talking to some folks that's warm. I'm talking to some, some real young people that's warm. And the devil keeps trying to pull you out of the house. They, they pulling you out. Man, come on over here with me, man. And guess what? Guess what he ain't doing? He ain't fighting me back. He didn't pull me and say, no, I don't want to go. He didn't pull me. Guess what he did? He went right with me. He pulled right with me. I'll go with you, devil. Okay, you won. But you got to have something when the devil is trying to pull you out. You got to have something on the inside. You, you, my, my God, my God. And guess what? If he can't pull me, you better find somebody that will help him. Help him. Help him. Help him. God ain't help me. You ain't going to take him. Say thank your mind. In the mind of Jesus. You can't have his mind. You can't have him. We rebuke every spirit. But come out his name of Jesus. The living of God. Give it over to him. Fight on back. Fight, fight, fight. Fight, fight, fight. Whoever you are, come on down here. And let's get the Lord pray for you right now. Get up on 
Fresh touch, Wobota. Do it for your glory, God.